Esquire Boot Polish and Bargain, starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Murder can be a very... T- does have one consolation. It's not you who comes home at the end of a day's work and says to the wife and kiddies, People, I'm dead. <laughs> Esquire Boot Polish, the shoe polish that lanolizes your shoes and gives you the brightest shine in the fastest time, and Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast relief of headache and upset stomach, present William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. <laughs> This is Bill Gargan. Before I tell you about tonight's story, which I call Beware the Walking Dog, I'd like to tell you that if you've been baffled trying to get your children's scraped shoes looking new again, try self-polishing Esquire brushless scuff coat. Tell them about it, Rex Marshall. Why, of course I will. Mothers, throw away the brush, throw away the cloth, throw away all the work. Because now, shining children's scuffed shoes is the easiest job around the house. Just get a bottle of Miracle self-polishing Esquire brushless scuff coat. The most wonderful polish ever made for children's scuffed shoes. You see, unlike an ordinary liquid polish, Esquire brushless doesn't just put a surface smear on your children's shoes, but it gets right down into those scuffs and scrapes and actually puts a new finish on the leather. And say, listen to this. Esquire brushless dries bright without rubbing. That's right. Just apply and it dries bright, thanks to the miracle ingredient Oxalan B that does all the work for you. It brings up the shine and keeps those shoes soft and natural looking. So remember now, to make your children's scuffed shoes look new again without any work at all for you, get Esquire brushless scuff coat in any color you need. Look for the bright yellow circus package. Barry Craig speaking. You're a confidential investigator. To prove it, you've got more kinds of headaches than even the psychiatrists have counted. Take the one I acquired late this afternoon. Silhouettes through a frosted glass door don't tell you much, except hers did. What it told me was not an investigator's business. Come in. On the other hand, the business day was almost over. The silhouette hadn't lied. Even without the mink tossed carelessly around her shoulders, she would have slowed up any parade. You in a trance or something? Look, mister, all I want from you is the answer to just one question. How anxious are you not to get killed? Huh? He is alive. Who is? Oh, me. For a while back there, I was beginning to worry. I uh, wasn't a trance. Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes I spend days in a trance. Mr. Craig. Yeah? I asked you a question. Well, that's right, you did. Uh, How anxious are you not to get killed? Very anxious. That's good. I was afraid you might be disappointed. Oh, no, because I don't want anyone to get killed on account of Caesar. On account of Caesar? He happened quite some time ago. Huh? Well, never mind. I I guess we're not talking about the same Caesar. I guess not. Mine's only a puppy. Only a, a... Mine was a Roman. Of course, he's a pretty big puppy. Sure. And he behaves just like a gentleman. Fine. I uh, guess you'll be pretty expensive, won't you? Depends on would, what you... Would $500 be enough? For what? For walking Caesar. Maybe it was because she was beautiful that I didn't promptly toss her out of the office. Or it could have been the 500 she mentioned. It was probably the 500 You want to hire me to walk your dog? Mm Mm-hmm. For $500, just how far do you expect me to walk him? Oh, just to the park and back. I live at the Grover Apartments on East 74th, so it's not terribly far. I know the place. My name's Doreen Dimple. I'm in apartment 14C. Wait a minute. Uh, The the 500 is for one round trip? Well, not exactly. Because after all, if that was the only thing, why should I hire a confidential investigator? You know something, Doreen? What? That same thought's already occurred to me. Corky was right. He said you were smart. Who's Corky? A gentleman friend. How does he sign his name? With a pen. 
Hmm. Never mind. Uh, uh, you were getting ready to tell me why you decided to hire an investigator to walk your dog. Well, the last couple of times I walked Caesar, somebody tried to shoot him. Missed? Mm-hmm. You're sure it was the dog they were shooting at? Am I sure it was... Mr. Craig? Yeah? Can you imagine a man shooting at me? Not easily. It, there could have been a woman, though. Uh-uh. I saw the man. And he was too far away for me to recognize, but it was a man. Then we let it go at that. Uh, you want me to walk the dog until I find out who's taking pot shots at him? That's right. You mentioned 500. Here. Thank you. What time does Caesar prefer? Around 8 o'clock at night. I'll be over at your place then. Oh, I'm so glad. By the way, Doreen. Hmm? You in show business? How did you guess? Professional secret. Not to mention Doreen Dimple. That's me. I know. It's also an incredible name. It is not. I made it up. That's what I meant. You at liberty now? Uh, well, I've retired, actually. Oh. Uh, Corky's idea? Uh-huh. He was afraid if I kept on working, I might catch pneumonia. Well, uh, that's always the danger in theatrical work. Sure. A girl's so exposed. Yeah. Well, so long, Doreen. I'll see you at eight. So long. Me and Caesar will be expecting you. I could have dignified the entire thing in my mind by figuring I was going to be shot at when I took the pooch for a stroll. But I suspected it was Doreen who was target for the week, and I just turned out to be nursemaid for a hound. But there was always one possibility. Caesar might bite. Hello, Jake. Hi. Hope I didn't disturb you. I wasn't doing nothing. Crops on Madison Avenue don't need attention? They've all gone home for the day. That's too bad. Jake. Yeah? You can start now. Oh, I keep forgetting. Speaking of uh, crops, did you notice my client? Yeah. Why have you got your eyes closed? Resting them. I know what you mean. Her name's Doreen Dimple. I don't know about the Doreen, but I got to... Jake, get... remember, that's not the kind of thing they approve of in Vermont. That's why I left Vermont. I go to work for Doreen tonight at 8, her apartment. Need help? I don't think so, Jake. Thanks anyway. All I have to do is walk her dog. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> Feels like I still got language difficulties with you New Yorkers. Jake, uh, walking Doreen's dog means nothing else but that. Oh, well, then maybe you'll enjoy the company. The dogs? No, no, the, the fellow that was waiting for her. Fellow who? They go off together? Yep. Probably a friend of hers. Yeah. No reason for me to worry about him, is there? I don't know. Either he was built funny or... Or what? Or he was carrying a revolver. <laughs> Jake sometimes suffers from delusions of melodrama. I shrugged him off, went home, ate, changed into my dog-walking suit, and at 8 o'clock... Hmm. Mr. Craig. Miss Dimple. Huh? Oh, you mean me? Yeah. Come in. You call me Doreen at the office. I'm always informal at the office. Well, you better keep on being informal, because if you call me Miss Dimple, I won't know who you're talking to. Even my mother didn't call me Miss Dimple. Well, uh, could you quiet that monster? That's Caesar. My mistake. Uh, how about quieting him? Well, he always barks like that unless he's been introduced. So... Come on, he won't fight. I think he's got weak teeth. Caesar, this is Mr. Craig. Mm. How do you do? I think he's going to like you. Well, that's nice. I might have a little trouble hauling him around the streets otherwise. He'll be very good. So I can concentrate on trouble from somebody else, maybe? From who? You probably know his name better than I do. I don't... You meet anyone when you left my office this afternoon? Um, uh, no. My mistake. Let's go, Caesar. <laughs> hey, I hope the leash holds. I left my elephant gun home. You'll be careful, Mr. Craig. Sure. No, nope. after all, what have I got to lose except uh, Caesar's life? Uh, 
The nice thing about walking a dog as big as Caesar is that nobody sneers at you. For $500, I can be sneered at, but I don't insist on it. The streets were kind of quiet and cold. Nothing happened until we got to the park. All that happened then was that Caesar got excited. All those trees. He got over them after a while, and we started back, which was maybe a mistake. Doreen Dimple had warned me there'd be times like this. I was philosophical about Caesar's danger until one of the bullets removed my hat, at which point I gave up philosophy and took up diving. This made me a lousy target. The unseen gunman must have been annoyed. He parked his car on the road leading through the park, I guess. Because I heard him taking off. At least I hoped it was he. Must have been. The barrage was over. I dug myself out of the ground and headed for home. Caesar's home. Doreen's home. Maybe somebody else's home, too. I now had a hole in my hat. This night entitled me to a few more girlish confidences with Doreen. It entitled me to a new hat, anyway. The lady may be occupied, Caesar. On the other hand, the lady gave us no warning. Well, door's not locked. The lady must be trusting. Oh, something's holding the door back. Something heavy and... Uh, hey! Yeah, Doreen. Her body was up against the door. That kept it shut. Take it easy. It's a body, but it's still got life in it. Life and a big bruise on the head. Doreen! What? Hey, you better take it slow. I'll, I'll help you up. I don't feel good. You shouldn't have hit whatever you did hit with your head. I didn't hit anything. I was hit. By whom? Well, I didn't see. The doorbell rang. I, I opened the door and it, it happened so fast. Burglar, maybe? I guess so. I wouldn't know. Well, we'll find out. I think maybe it's time we got out of the foyer and... Huh? I just remembered. Corky was visiting. He was in the living room when I answered the door. Maybe he caught the burglar or... Or maybe he didn't. Let's go see. All right. Although Corky wouldn't have left me lying on the floor. Oh? Sure. He's a gentleman. And gentlemen... Never leave ladies lying on the floor. What's uh, Corky's full name? J. Fotherington Bruce. Obviously a gentleman. Nothing in the name suggests Corky, though. Oh, that was because his greatest fun was pulling corks out of bottles. Hmm. Nice living room. But Corky isn't here. Milk bottles don't come with corks. Your uh, friend was a souse? Corky was a gentle... <gasps> yeah, I just noticed it, too. The foot sticking out from behind the window draperies. Stay where you are. Maybe 50, gray at the temples, red at the nose, paunchy in the midsection. Corky. Corky. He didn't catch a burglar, though. What? What he caught was a bullet in the heart. Back to William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig in just a moment. But first, a word from Bromo Seltzer famous for fast relief of upset stomach as well as headache. Miss Jordan, report to clinic. Miss Jordan, report to clinic. Miss Jordan... In recent clinical research, nurses reported that sparkling, refreshing bromo seltzer relieved distress of stomach acidity and nervous indigestion better, more effectively than other leading upset stomach remedies tested. You see, bromo seltzer contained sodium citrate, one of the finest ingredients known to doctors for the relief of acid indigestion. And only bromo seltzer gently relieves nervous tension so often associated with upset stomach. Next time you have acid indigestion, take bromo seltzer. Like so many nurses, you too may agree. For upset stomach, bromo seltzer works best. Remember, for prompt relief of stomach acidity as well as headache, take sparkling, refreshing bromo seltzer. For best results, use cool water, follow the label, avoid excessive use. And next time your stomach is upset, remember that many nurses report... For upset stomach, bromo seltzer works best. And now... Back to William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. <laughs> Co 
Milwaukee, who in life had been J. Frothington Bruce, would uncork no more bottles. Bullets in the heart had seen to that. I phoned Homicide and told them about it. They said they were busy, but seeing as it was me, they'd be right over. Doreen and I waited. Need a handkerchief? No. Dry type tears? Don't be mean. This is not the time a girl likes a fellow to be mean to her. Was Corky ever mean to you? Gosh, no. He was... A... I know, I know. A gentleman. He even remembered me in his will. How hard did he remember you? Oh, something like $50,000. What's, uh, like $50,000? $50,000. What's his wife going to say about that? I don't care what she... Mr. Craig, how did you know Corky was married? The Corkys of this world always are. Did she approve of his helping you uh, leave show business? She didn't have any reason not to approve. There was nothing wrong between Corky and me. He was a... Ter- I, whatever he was, he's dead now, and somebody killed him. <gasps> oh. Were you under the impression he died of old age? Well, I knew he'd been shot, but... Mr. Craig, are the police going to think I killed him on account of we were alone in the apartment? Uh, that's going to be up to the police. Is there a back door? Uh-huh, from the kitchen. Lead me to it. All right. Well, latch from the inside. Is that important? It makes your story sound a lot better. It explains why your visitor used the front door and took a chance on being seen by you. Oh, the back door was latched, so... <gasps> Mr. Craig, you're a darling. I look terrible in lipstick, though. I like the effect. Maybe, but the police won't, uh, so you better give them my regards. <laughs> Mr. Craig, where are you going? To tell a widow the sad news, if it's sad, or if it's news. I know enough to wait for the police on a murder case, but sometimes it's better not to know too much. Because people who don't know too much sometimes get told. Yes? It's pretty late, I know. It's very late. If we spend much time out on this doorstep, it'll be later still. Maybe too late. Too late for what? A heart-to-heart talk before the police arrive. Are they arriving? Pretty soon. I won't pretend I know what this is about, but come in. Thanks. You're Mrs. Bruce? I am. I figured you for at least 20 years older and a lot less decorative. Thank you. This way, I'm a little worried. What about? The way I had it set up. You were supposed to be as old as your husband. Not the kind of woman who could stir a pulse anymore. And? I'm having trouble with mine. This, uh, way you had it set up. Set up for what? The murder of your husband. <gasps> Pretty brutal, excuse me. It doesn't matter. Maybe it does. You're not shedding any tears. Phony one. I wish I could, but... Yeah. The book of etiquette calls for them, but, uh, it's better this way. Better? More honest, perhaps, but hard... My business, I don't run into honesty so often I'm calloused about it. You've been home the last couple of hours? Yes. Is that when... Yeah. Anybody around who can verify that? Why? You'll need a verification. You inherit, don't you? I suppose so. Maybe the guy trying to imitate wallpaper behind those curtains might help. Oh. I spotted him the minute I walked in. Oh. Briar. A pity he was so observant, Helen. Depends on how you look at it. Why the act? Did you think maybe it was her husband ringing the doorbell? Her husband never rings. My name is Anthony Breyer. I'm an attorney at law. How do you do? Mrs. Bruce was considering a divorce. Uh Uh-huh. Because she's a bad shot? What do you mean? Because she missed Doreen a couple of times when the blonde was out walking the dog? I don't know of any... Anthony. Well, there's no reason to bear our souls to to this... Keyhole peeper? No, there isn't. We knew about Doreen. She was going to be named in my suit. Corky didn't keep her very much of a secret. The scoundrel even named her in his will. I know. I still don't know, though, why you ducked for cover when I rang the doorbell. That's easily explained. We were afraid you might be someone working for my husband. You see, he... He's accused me of... of... With Brian? Yes. How true is it? Why, you... Oh, come on. Let's act like we're grown up. Well, I am very much in love with Mrs. Bruce. Always have been. But she's not. A jury might believe that. Or it might not. A, A jury? Maybe I'd better repeat myself. Your husband was murdered. 
in Doreen's apartment. Mrs. Bruce doesn't know where... Bowie, both of you know. If you were going to name her in a divorce suit, you'd have had a detective on her. Look, you I... You put up a very bad performance for a lawyer. Mrs. Bruce may be better look for somebody else. Good night. Wait. Yeah? You haven't told me your name. Barry Craig. You said something about honesty. Mr. Craig, Anthony was not here with me for the last two hours. He came just a few minutes before you Helen, did. there was no necessity You've for you. You kind of deprived him of an alibi, haven't you, Mrs. Bruce? I suppose so. As well as yourself. Good night. I had it all now. It didn't make a pretty picture. And of all the people involved, the one I felt sorry for was Corky. He hadn't much of a life, but a wife who despised him, a lawyer who hated him, and Doreen who uh, had a price tag attached. Maybe the bullet that had killed him had done him a favor, but whoever fired that bullet hadn't done it out of kindness. Good evening, Lieutenant Rogers. Gracious of you to drop in at headquarters, Mr. Crane. Don't be bitter, Trav. Want me to spread the news around that you can read Latin? Millions of people can read Latin. How many of them are policemen? All right, so I've got a shameful past. I went to college. Where did you go? Atlantic City. I was young and foolish. After you left the Dimple apartment? I visited the Bruce apartment. And met the widow? The widow and the lawyer. But you must have men there by now getting their stories. I have. You gave Mrs. Bruce a nice opportunity to rehearse. Your men ought to be grateful. Who enjoys a lousy performance? When it's given by someone suspected of murder, the district attorney. Is Doreen being held? No, nothing positive against her. How about her boyfriend? Joe Stover, in the clear. He was in Brooklyn at the important time, being wrapped up on a speeding charge. No possible doubt? No possible doubt. Sure, he carries a gun, but... Uh... Barry. Yeah? How did you know about a boyfriend? He wasn't at the apartment when you were there? No, but uh, a dame like Doreen always carries a boyfriend on the side. You must have had more reason than that. Jake spotted Doreen chatting with a loaded lad right after she'd been to see me at the office. All right. Means nothing, though. He's not in the picture at all so far as the killing goes. Okay. Oh, Trav. Yes? Got a guard on Doreen's apartment? Yeah. Send him home to his family, huh? Why? Maybe his family loves him. The answer is no. Maybe I'll take his place. Somebody might not recognize me... Somebody might be just as anxious to get Doreen as Bruce. Somebody might make a stab at it. Send the guard home. The answer is yes. Who? Oh, Mr. Craig. Yes. Mind if I come in? Of course not. I'm glad you came. Thanks. Not only because you're nice, but because the policeman who was on guard went home. I was sort of frightened. Shouldn't have been. You've got Caesar. <laughs> well, he's cute, but I don't think he'd be much protection. Maybe not. Barry, why did you really come here? Just a hunch. I thought maybe whoever didn't like Bruce mightn't like you either. Oh. I might be able to discourage him. Or her. Mrs. Bruce? Maybe. Or maybe Briar. Who's that? Lawyer, in love with Mrs. Bruce. You ever meet either of them? No. They were never here at the apartment? No. Doesn't mean anything. Either of them could have paid you a visit while you were out. The police think that they were... The police are keeping an open mind. Mrs. Bruce and Briar both had motive and opportunity. So, for that matter, had you. But, but I was unconscious. You could have donated the bruise to yourself. Is that what you think? No, I'm... Sure, someone else slugged you, but uh, there's no proof. If there was, you'd be in the clear. You better go on to bed. It's late. But how can I prove it was someone else who hit me? You can't. Go on to bed. All right. You're going to... Wait. Yeah. Caesar will keep me company. Good night. Good night. I didn't think it would be too long a wait. It wasn't. I had more than Caesar to keep me company. I couldn't sleep, Mr. Craig. Do you think... Oh. Somebody. Yeah. 
Should I? Yeah. Go ahead. See who it is. Nobody's going to try anything in the car. Eh? It's too exposed. All right. Caesar, you'll have to excuse me. I'm using the back door. Sometimes you meet more people that way. All you have to do is move up to the bend in the corridor where it leads to the front door of the apartment and wait until he gets in sight. Then you get in his way with a fist. And you've met Joe Stover. He's out. The gun in his pocket's still warm. You take it for company, move up the corridor to Doreen's apartment, go inside the half-open door, uh, bend over the body on the floor, and, uh, and make sure it's only a flesh wound the girl's got. It's only a flesh wound. So it turns out you were right. The gamble paid off. You don't bother trying to bring her to. You go into the living room, take a peek into the bedroom to make sure there's a phone in it. There is. Then you call the police pick up a murderer. No, not Joe Stover. Doreen. So you see, Trav, as soon as I told her the bruise on her head wouldn't be good enough proof, she ducked into her bedroom, phoned Stover, told him to come over and shoot her in the shoulder. That would be very good proof that she hadn't hit herself on the head. As she hadn't. Stover had done that too. Setting up the picture. Yeah. I was pretty sure she was the one all along. She brought me in to prove someone was after her. Who would have bothered except the jealous wife, we were supposed to think? Stover shot at you in the park. He'd have known where and when you'd be there. And then scrammed to set up an alibi. Right. Doreen made a small mistake, though. Started me thinking about her. When I got back to the apartment, I couldn't get the door open without pushing her unconscious body aside. The killer hadn't left via the back door. It was latched. So she couldn't have fallen down in that position I found her in, blocking the front door. No. She must have put herself there. It's a small mistake, but a good one. Although you did take a chance when the doorbell rang, Barry. You might have been wrong. It might have been Mrs. Bruce of Briar. Uh-uh. I'd already found out that they'd never been to the apartment, never met Doreen. When that doorbell rang, Caesar didn't bark. But he always barked when strangers came to the door. Hmm. That made it certain it was Stover. Nice, Barry. No. I don't like it when a client turns out to be a killer. You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Beware the Walking Dog, was written by Lou Vittis. Next week, it's the strange story titled Sniper's Bullet, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a bakery worker who is absolutely crazy about dough becomes a problem to his never-loving family when his death catches them totally unprepared with an alibi. Good night, folks. See you next week. Esquire Boot Polish, the shoe polish that lanolizes your shoes and gives the brightest shine in the fastest time, and Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast relief of headache and upset stomach, have presented Barry Craig. Confidential Investigator, starring William Gargan. Featured in the role of Doreen was Jane Webb. Carl Caruso speaking. Tonight, enjoy Meet the Press on NBC.